What happens in the first 12 hours of a fast? What is happening in your body? When is it burning carbs? When is it starting to use fat? Well, let's take a walk through. It's a pretty cool experience. Okay, so the first thing that happens is your body uses the fuel that is in the bloodstream from your last meal. Okay, there's no denying that. That's a pretty obvious one, right? Whether it's proteins, fats, or carbs, your body is taking that fuel and doing something with it and probably using it for fuel. Now, this could be anywhere from one to four hours after you start your fast that you're still kind of working through this food, right? But then once that food sort of wears off, then you start recruiting carbohydrates that are in your storage form, generally in your liver. You have carbohydrates that are stored in your liver. It's called hepatic glycogen. Okay, now these hepatic glycogen stores release the glucose, okay, and they travel around, do whatever they need to do, and we burn that glucose. That's really kind of the second phase. Then after that, since the body is still in a little bit of an alarm state, it says, oh shoot, well, there's no fuel on hand, we've burned through some of this liver glycogen, it kind of has a gray area for a little bit where it starts to go through what's called gluconeogenesis. Okay, it starts to break down some of our protein stores. It starts to break down uh, possibly some muscle. It starts to break down little bits of glycerol. And it starts to kind of turn those through a process called gluconeogenesis into carbohydrates. It doesn't super elevate this process just yet. It comes in later again. But it starts to see, you see after about four hours, you start to see an increase in gluconeogenesis. And that's simply because your body is kind of in a transition mode. Okay, it hasn't quite gotten to the point where it's burning fats yet, and it's kind of still trying to adjust utilizing carbs a little bit. So it's kind of in this gray area, which by the way, you can change like the length of like, how long it takes to get into a fasted state. Like one of the things I would typically recommend, you get into a fasted state faster if you aren't consuming a bunch of carbohydrates right before you start your fast. Okay, and I've suggested that for a couple reasons. Number one, you get there faster because you don't have to burn through those cars, but you also end up not being as hungry. Okay, you end up having this like, you know, not this big spike of blood glucose that then has to crash right in the like, most cru crucial, critical part of your fast when it's already kind of difficult. So I usually say like load up on protein so it keeps you satiated. Uh, also today's video sponsor is protein related. It's a brand called Butcher Box. If you like grass-fed, grass-finished meat, if you like sockeye salmon, if you like good chicken, if you like good quality meat, Definitely recommend them. They're who I use to typically break a fast with in terms of protein, but there is a link down below. You can check out my custom boxes, like what I recommend you get and things like that. But you can also just check out Butcher Box for yourself and pick the cuts of meat that you would like. They've been a big sponsor and supporter on this channel for four or five years now. They think they were like the initial sponsor along with Kettle and Fire on my channel. So super awesome. So that link is down below in the description if you want to get some good quality meat delivered right to your doorstep and a thank you to them for the support on this channel. So there's ways that you can kind of manipulate that, like I talked about. Like you can manipulate how you, uh, when you reach these phases of your fast, and that's up for debate, right? Like how quickly are you gonna get into a given state? But I'm just trying to walk you through what's happening in your body. Okay, so now that you've kind of gone through a little bit of gluconeogenesis, your body is saying, okay, we really need fuel, we need it now. And if you're super, super lean, then this is a little bit difficult. But for most people, this becomes the opportune time for the body to start using fat. And I've discussed this in other videos, but how? How does your body start using fat when you're fasting? What is actually happening? Well, sit tight because this is really interesting. The sympathetic nervous system, your nervous system, goes into a stress mode, okay? And that stress mode is actually a very good thing. The stress mode triggers your adrenal glands, the little, little glands on top of your kidneys, to release adrenaline and release things like cortisol and epinephrine, norepinephrine, okay, all the things that are called catecholamines. Now, we used to just sit there and think like, okay, well, this is just, these are just stress hormones. What are they doing for us? They have a huge benefit to allowing us to burn fat. You see, our fat cells aren't just ready to be burned. A fat cell, also known as an adipocyte, is just a big spherical house for a bunch of triglycerides. So it's not like you just take one fat cell and burn it. A fat cell can have a ton of fat in it or it can have a little bit of fat in it and it's up to your body to determine like how much it liberates. So what happens is these catecholamines, adrenaline and stuff like that, their job is to go to the big fat cell, knock on the door and say, hey, we need you to release triglycerides. We need fuel and we need it now. But there's a huge problem here. The big problem is that the fat that is inside the fat cell is a triglyceride and a triglyceride cannot be used as fuel. It needs to get cut up a triglyceride is just like the name implies, a glycerol molecule with tri three 
fatty acid legs. So it looks like a little funky tripod, like a little three-legged monster with a funny head and three fatty legs. Those legs have to be cleaved off and then we can use the fatty acids. But we can't do anything with it in its triglyceride form until the catecholamines knock on the door. So what happens then is protein kinase A opens the door and he says, what's up man, like I was sleeping, what are we doing? And the catecholamines are jumping up and down saying, ah, this guy's starving, start releasing fat. And he says, okay. So he goes and he gets a bunch of other messengers and these messengers then trigger initially adipose triglyceride lipase, which cuts off the first leg. Okay, so now we have one fatty acid that's liberated. Okay, and then the next one comes along and that's hormone sensitive lipase and that cuts off the second leg. Then we have monoglycerol lipase that comes along and cuts off the third leg. So now we're left with three fatty acids and a glycerol molecule. Okay, this is where things get very interesting with fasting. Because this is normal lipolysis, and this happens in any fat loss state. So now you have a glycerol molecule, and that glycerol molecule actually serves a powerful purpose when we are fasting. Okay, so that glycerol molecule is water soluble, and it goes straight into the, to the blood, okay? But the fatty acids are like, bro, like, why aren't you taking us with us? And he's like, you won't, you won't work, you'll float, and you'll sink, you'll do all kinds of stuff because you're fat. Like fat and water don't mix. I'm water soluble, so peace. So he takes off. And the fatty acid back, or the fatty acid molecules, the three fatty acids, have to take a special bus. They have to take a bus called albumin. Okay, now the albumin is going to carry the fatty acids to wherever they need to go. So now we've got a bunch of fatty acids that are liberated, and since we are starving because we're fasting, they're going to the cells for, to become fuel. They're actually getting burned, which is exactly why, and I mentioned this in other videos too, going for a walk or anything like that during this stage around like you know hour 10 12 something like that is great because you've already liberated these fats now put them to work and it will upregulate this process even more because what happens is these fats are in the bloodstream going to the cells to get burned okay if they start getting burned fast what's going to happen well the adrenals are going to pump out more catecholamines because they underestimated how much fuel we needed well i asked the fat cell to release this much fuel and he did, but shoot, this person's walking now. We need way more, ramp it up, ramp it up, ramp it up. And then boom, your lipolysis, more fatty acids being uh, liberated and then utilized. But what about that glycerol backbone? What the heck's he doing? What's that head doing? Well, believe it or not, a lot of times when you are 12, 16, 20 hours into a fast, depends on the person, obviously it definitely does. What can happen is you'll see, wow, I'm using fat, but my glucose levels are a little bit higher. What's going on? That glycerol backbone, goes to the liver and gets converted via gluconeogenesis into glucose. That's right, the triglyceride head that was in a fat cell now goes to the liver and gets turned into glucose. Does this make you fat? Heck no. This glycerol that gets turned into glucose goes to the brain and starts fueling your brain. That's why when you look at studies, you start to see, ah, insulin levels drop, 16 hours in, all of a sudden we start seeing an increase in gluconeogenesis. That doesn't mean that you're halting fat loss. That means that your body is more than likely cleaving off that glycerol backbone and using it for fuel in, glu in a glucose sense. It's very fascinating and very awesome. So now that fatty acids have been being utilized by the cells a lot more, they're getting kind of used to the guys, right? They're like, hey, you know, I was using glucose a lot, but you're kind of cool, kind of like how you feel with you. So the body and the cells start getting really used to utilizing fats and it actually happens pretty quick. It happens at a small scale in an individual fast where the body develops the mitochondrial machinery or just the immediate machinery and then it happens over a long period of time. If you're experienced with fasting, it's called fat adaptation and what happens there is now instead of being deprived of glucose being a shock, if you were deprived of fat it would be a shock. The body says, okay, well let's activate certain pathways that allow it to be more efficient to use fats i.e. PPAR alpha, a nuclear receptor protein that goes to the nucleus of a cell and commands all kinds of different changes in gene expression to allow a cell to upregulate CD36, upregulate fatty acid trans, uh, you know, transporters, all kinds of things like carnitine palmitoyl transferase, everything that's required for utilizing fat at a cellular level upregulates. So what I'm suggesting here is that over time, you marinate your cells in these fatty acids from consistent liberation and they get better at it. But what the heck does that mean? It means that as you get deeper into a fast, your body is no longer starving. So after 16, 20, 24 hours, you're not starving anymore. And your body says, oh, well, we can turn down the AMPK signaling and fat loss actually slows down.
So I usually suggest fasting for 16, 24 hours because that's kind of the sweet spot. After that, fat loss kind of slows down because you're not in as much of a deficit anymore. Your body knows how to create the fuel. It's developed a seamless, efficient system, and it doesn't have to sound the alarm every single time you fast. So there you have it, the quick breakdown of how your body liberates fat and how fasting works from a body composition standpoint. I'll see you tomorrow.